What's up guys, Mr. Bingham here bringing you a new video. Um, today's going to be a quick one. We're going to be talking about setting up the Simicube 2 in iRacing. Now, there's already plenty of videos on this topic, uh, but what I'm going to be doing today is talking you through a fundamental concept that you need to understand prior to getting into the detail that's covered in those videos. And that fundamental concept is in the relationship between iRacing and the TrueDrive software. I've linked a few of these videos below, but if you don't want to understand why and just want to understand what settings to use, um, then there'll be a link on the screen somewhere for you to click, which will take you directly to my recommended settings. Um, as always, if you enjoy the content, then please do like and subscribe and head over to my Twitch channel um, at twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Underscore Bingham. So what is the fundamental concept and why is it so important? Um, in summary, there are two ways of defining the strength and limiting the strength of the force feedback delivered to your wheel in iRacing. Um, each of these two options has its own pros and cons and can result in vastly different outputs dependent on your preferences. And so you need to make a decision um, as to which route you prefer. The first option is to control the strength of force feedback in iRacing um, and the second option is to control the strength of the force feedback in the TrueDrive software. Now what led me to create this um, video is the following um, confusing or reasonably confusing um, quote um, written by an iRacing developer um, that I found when I was trying to understand these settings uh, myself. Max force is a scalar that maps between the nanometer signal the physics generates to the 0 to 100% signal the wheel accepts. You can think of it as min 100 FFB from physics max force asterisk 100. Now I like to think that I'm a reasonably intelligent person um, but when I first read that quote um, it didn't really um, make immediate sense to me or at least I wasn't confident um, that my interpretation um, of it made sense. Um, it does make sense um, but it's not very reader friendly so let's break it down. So the, the max force setting in iRacing is a configurable setting, so something you can change that creates a proportionate relationship between the force the iRacing sim outputs and the strength of force your wheel is capable of creating. The max force setting also limits the maximum force iRacing is allowed to communicate to your wheel, i.e. the clipping point. Um, and if you don't know what clipping is, um, I would encourage you to give that a search. It's probably something you need to understand prior to watching the remainder of this video. If you're still not sure that the definition that I've just given there makes sense, then let's walk through an example. Assume I set my maximum force setting in iRacing to 75 newton meters. Um, firstly, this creates the clipping point. Um, as such, iRacing will simulate all forces generated through the steering column up to 75. Um, that's the steering column in iRacing, so in the simulation itself, um, up to 75 newton meters, um, after which it will clip that signal. However, as we know, the Simicube 2 wheelbases are not capable of producing forces of up to 75 newton meters, and so that 75 newton meter signal is scaled or mapped proportionately to the force the wheel is capable of producing. Now, I have the Simicube 2 Pro that's capable of producing 25 newton meters of torque, and so when I have the wheel strength set to 100%, i.e., 25 newton meters the 75 newton meter signal is scaled down to fit within this range um, and so as such we end up with a, a basic equation um, that, that we can use which is the iRacing force signal so the, the the level of force that iRacing is simulating in the physics multiplied by the true drive overall strength divided by the iRacing max force and this gives us the real output the real output being the the amount of force that you actually physically feel in your wheel so if we take the example and equation that we've just discussed um, there if the iRacing physics determined that 10 newton meters of torque 
should be delivered to the driver through the drive um, through the steering column again that's the steering column in the simulation and um, then the equation would look like this we have 10 newton meters of torque through the i racing simulation steering column multiplied by the 25 newton meters of torque um, available um, in our wheelbase and divided by 75 newton meters of torque which is our iRacing max 4 setting um, and that gives us um, an output or a real output of 3.3 newton meters of torque so that's what you're feeling in the steering wheel um, i.e 33 percent now what this means is that if you increase the max force setting you will actually decrease the level of force you physically feel through the wheel because the max force setting has an inverse relationship with the real output um, if we use the example above but change the max force setting to 100 we end up with the following equation and as you can see um, the real output is lower down to 2.5 newton meters of torque by increasing the max force setting. And this gives us method one of changing the level of force feedback you feel through the wheel. And that method is that you leave the true drive overall strength at 100%. So in my case, that means that I'm utilizing my wheel's full range of force up to 25 newton meters. And instead you alter the max force setting from car to car to change the force that you actually feel through the wheel. Uh, bearing in mind that the max force setting has an inverse relationship with the real output. This is how I do it. Okay, this is the method that I use. I paid for a SimuQ2 Pro so that I could simulate a broad range of forces. I don't want to limit that range of forces that I'm capable of simulating. Now, the other thing to be aware of, however, is that 25 Newton meters of torque is a lot of torque um, and during normal driving conditions the iRacing force signal will be nowhere near 75 newton meters and so the force that you feel through the wheel will be nowhere near 25 newton meters however crash events can and do result in forces being simulated in the iRacing steering column of 75 newton meters and above um, and since we don't normally crash on purpose this means that you may suddenly receive a force through your steering wheel, through your wheelbase of 25 newton meters when you're not expecting it. And this can hurt. Trust me, from first hand experience, this can hurt. It can also cause injury. Now, that's a risk that I'm willing to take as I feel that this method is the purest way of simulating the forces you would feel in real life. Um, it also means that you rarely, if ever, suffer from clipping during normal driving conditions um, as there's a huge amount of headroom, which is one of the key benefits. Method two utilizes the True Drive software to alter the force you feel through the wheel with the iRacing Max 4 setting typically remaining at the same value. So let's say you want to limit the force you feel through the wheel to 8.33 newton meters um, of torque as you worried about um, excessive forces what we can do we can substitute that number the 8.33 newton meters of torque into the previous formula that we used and using the same example of 10 newton meters of torque multiplied by 8.33 newton meters of torque divided by the max force setting of 75 equals a real output that you would feel of 1.11 newton meters of torque now, 1.11 newton meters of torque um, is not very much. So we can counter this by bringing the max force setting down. Remember, the max force setting has an inverse relationship with the real output. So by bringing the maximum force setting down, we can increase the real output. Now, a typical value that people um, tend to use that prefer this method is 25 newton meters of torque. So again, using the same example, 10 newton meters of torque multiplied by 8.33 newton meters which is our um, wheelbase's maximum force setting divided by 25 which is the iRacing max force results in a real output of 3.33 newton meters now if you recall in method one in the first example that i gave you the real output was also 3.33 
newton meters um, so that's great um, we've eliminated the risk of pain and injury and misery in example one um, and we're experiencing the same forces so there must be a drawback um, and yes uh, there is a drawback um, clipping is now your enemy um, 25 newton meters of max force in iRacing may be sufficient for cars such as the MX-5 um, maybe the Skippy at a push um, but GT cars will suffer from clipping sometimes heavily and formula cars will clip a lot so you've just paid over £1,000 to experience the horrid effects of clipping um, that we're all trying to get away from when we upgrade to this level of hardware. Um, but you do have the added benefit of not um, risking a wrist fracture, um, which I guess um, will be high up the agenda um, for some people. Now, there's probably a balance um, between the two methods that you can probably find that may suit your preferences. Um, hopefully this video gives you the tools that you need to find um, that balance. Now, I'm now going to go ahead and show you guys my settings, um, courtesy of Bino um, in the iRacing forums. Um, I've linked a few of his videos um, below. Um, but as always, I hope you've found that useful. I um, hope you've enjoyed the content um, and I look forward to seeing you again in another video. Thanks guys.